Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, and I'm glad that you could join us for another segment. We're going to be talking with Mr. Darcy Klug this morning, CEO and chairman of Red Hawk Holdings Corporation, and he's going to talk about the Sand Mini First Responder. It's a, it's a portable device that, um, well, he, I'll, let, um, I'll let Darcy tell us all about this, uh, this ingenious invention. Welcome to the program, Mr. Darcy Klug. How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Right. Well, um, I obviously you you are um, chairman of uh, Red Hawk Holdings. Um, are you uh, an inventor, uh, a financier? Are you in the health uh, trades industry? What uh, is your background? Uh, actually, my uh, background by training is on the financial side. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have uh, been a been a CPA since uh, uh, the mid seventies. Uh, mm-hmm. Although I don't practice as a CPA any longer. Uh, but have been in the uh, financial arena uh, since since that time. Now, and, Red, and, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to ask about uh, Red Hawk Holdings, but I think you had another thought there. Yeah, I was I was going to say that uh, got gotten. I've been in the financial arena for the last um, uh, 40, 40 plus years. Uh, uh, in, in, in senior financial positions with uh, with companies, um, uh, primarily oil field service companies, and got involved in the uh, in the medical industry here over the last uh, five seven years, mm-hmm. uh, from an investment standpoint. Now, Reddit, what is Red Hawk's uh, actual function? What exactly are are you involved in there at Red Hawk Holdings? Right. Red Hawk Holdings is a internationally diverse company with um, uh, with through its its own wholly owned subsidiaries is engaged in the sales of cutting edge medical devices, branded generic pharmaceuticals, and equipment sales and leasing. Right, right, and. Um this this device, the Sand Mini First Responder. Let's let's talk about that first of all. Let's talk about the dangers of um, needles, uh, syringes, things of that nature that that we've been hearing about for years. But our first responders, our our police officers, our EMTs, they have a particular uh, danger when it comes to uh, sticks. Yes, the uh, needle stick injuries are. Uh, very very commonplace in the uh, in, in the healthcare profession, and with the um, uh, issues with needle improper disposal of, of needles, uh, it is it has created a real problem for uh, first responders, mm-hmm. uh, and they are at a uh, a greater uh, disadvantage than those in the healthcare industry, in that. Uh, typically, when someone in the healthcare industry receives a needle, needle stick injury, uh, there's a strong likelihood that they can um, trace back to the individual uh, that the needle was was used upon to see if there's any sort of uh, ha- uh, biohazards that they're dealing with. That's not the case with uh, first responders. Many times they they are exposed to needles on the ground, mm-hmm. um, uh, on, uh, on on the persons of, uh, uh, of of offenders, and so they don't always know uh, where the uh, the needle stick injury and the biohazard is associated with that needle stick injury. So it becomes a a, a greater problem for them. Mm-hmm. And speaking of of needle stick injuries. I mean, there are there are claims, there are doctors' visits, there could even be medications and and further treatment, which um, goes to the the dollars that are spent simply by not um, properly disposing of needles and syringes. Is that correct? Absolutely. Just just in the healthcare industry alone, the uh, the the government accounting office uh, estimates there's well in excess of. Um, um, a million, a million needle stick injuries per year, uh, causing, uh, costing the healthcare industry alone about uh, 
five hundred million dollars a year in in workers' comp cost. In in the case of uh, first responders, uh, a needle stick injury on a first responder, even if he or she does not contract the disease, uh, will will cost the uh, the law enforcement agency. Uh, 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 at least thirty thousand dollars a year in in workers workers comp claims, uh, and should the law enforcement officer contract uh, uh, a disease such as Hep C, Hep B, uh, HIV, uh, those medical claims would uh, uh, easily top a, a million dollars. And uh, of course, that's all taxpayer dollar. As most of these law enforcement agencies are self-funded through taxpayer dollars. Now, we've all seen over the past uh, couple, three decades, the um, the stick disposals, the needle disposal dispensaries in our doctor's offices, in our ERs, in our um, urgent care centers. We've been that kind of a commonplace. But you uh, take it a step further uh, when it comes to disposal of uh, syringes and needles. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Uh, our our sand line, the line of products, um, needle incineration devices, we believe provide a, a safer, more economical and environmentally fray, uh, a friendly way of disposing uh, needles. Uh, our devices are both uh, FDA approved and OSHA compliant. Uh, the, uh, the devices work off of a, an electrical arc that incinerates the needle um, at uh, in excess of 4,000 degrees in a matter of uh, a few seconds, uh, uh, allowing the the remaining syringe in uh, a household setting uh, to simply be discarded in the uh, household trash, mm-hmm. and in a clinical setting, no longer have uh, what's referred to as a sharp. Uh, the uh, the syringe can simply be disposed of, and what they were generally referred to as red bag waste, which is where they put all the uh, the bandages and gauze and tongue compressors and things of that nature. So, uh, so yeah, it, it, it uh, does away with the need for sharp containers. So it, it obviously kills any germs, bacteria, along with um, incinerating the needle and the syringe inside this device as well. A- absolutely. All, all, all blood-borne pathogens are, uh, uh, are removed. That's correct. Now, is this uh, how much does it um, how much would it cost a healthcare facility to, I guess, replace the sharps? Is that what we're talking about? Replacing sharps or um, emptying sharps into these devices after the sharps? Are, you know, I'm not sure how um, where the cost effect you know, it, comes in. Yeah, it, 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 it varies. Uh, it, it certainly varies by uh, healthcare facility. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and depending on uh, volume, uh, on the the number of needles uh, that they that they are going to uh, uh, need to dispose of, um, uh, in most cases it is um, it is uh, determined by the amount of weight uh, that, that that they are sp- uh, disposing of. And a big, mm-hmm. big, a big part of that weight is the actual sharps container itself. Mm. So by removing, uh, by removing the uh, the need to dispose of the container itself, you su- uh, substantially reduce the uh, the weight uh, to the be sp- to be disposed of, as well as eliminating the the risk of needle stick injuries. Now, what about maintenance of the device? Um, is this something that can be readily uh, cleaned or scraped of uh, residue? Um, the, the 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 Sand Mini, which is our smallest portable device, mm-hmm. uh, through with its FDA testing, um, has been uh, uh, tested to uh, incineration of thirty thousand needles uh, with without a failure. Uh, and virtually has zero residue uh, wow. remaining. Uh, when we get into burning the larger needles, uh, and and let me add that we're not only talking about the medical industry, but the the dental industry and the the veterinary industry as well. 
uh, because they both uh, have needles to deal with. Uh, when you start dealing with uh, with bigger needles, there's a small amount of what what's referred to as, as slag uh, uh-huh. that uh, that goes into the container. And what we do is uh, once once there's been an incineration of five thousand needles, uh, we bring the, the the device back into our facility. Uh, even though uh, the slag no longer has any uh, biohazards with it, uh, the uh, uh, we empty the container. We empty the container, uh, check it out, refurb it, and uh, um, and return it back to the back to the customer. And now during that process, uh, we we give the customer a a loaner, uh, a loaner that they can uh, that they can work with. Uh, that they can work with and, and, until they get their unit back. Where can we get some more information about uh, the SAN Mini Responder online? Uh, you can go to uh, the website nomoresharps.com mm-hmm. and uh, you'll see the uh, all the information there. nomoresharps.com That's it. Great. Darcy, thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning. Great. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, for this health supplier segment in conversation with Mr. Darcy Klug, with Mr. Darcy Klug. Transcripts of this program are transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com Health Professional Radio.